welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are going over how you can use Badger DB with your Go projects. So let me walk you through what my code looks like. I'm building a stream bot. So basically I want to have multiple bots running for different APIs. So one of them is going to work with YouTube, one of them is going to work with Twitch. This stream bot is basically going to allow you to centralize the commands, which doesn't seem to be a thing you can do with Nightbot. So far I've got my repository dog go file. So I'm basically implementing the repository um, design pattern kind of. So I'm basically defining how I want to interact with my database. And then I have an interface that defines what those functions should all look like. And then I implement it with my commands repository data structure. And so here I've basically got functions for get all. Um, this I actually figured out, this is completely from the documentation for Badger DB. So this db.view is apparently a wrapper for uh, transactions. So there's also a db.update, which is also a wrapper for transactions. But a lot of the uh, like Badger operations need to happen within a transaction. TXN is kind of required for you to like interact with the database. So you'll kind of see like here, uh, we got a new iterator and then we're iterating over the values in the database. And that's kind of how we're getting all the values. And then we are appending that to a list of commands. And then at the end, we are returning the list of commands and potentially an error if there was an error. Um, but in this case, it looks like I'm, I'm returning all the errors as they come up. So we don't really worry about that too, too much. And then we've also got set values. So this is just going to add a new value to the database. And as you can see here, I'm using the update wrapper. And then as you can see, as I mentioned, the TXN, aka the, I think that's transaction, short for transaction. I need that transaction to be happening for me to be able to set values and things like that. So I believe that that's just so that it, you don't get like a locked database. Um, I could be wrong on that, but that's my speculation. That's what I'm doing for set value. And then it also turns out that to um, modify any commands that are in the database, it's actually the same command. So you basically just would set the value. Um, and if it's an ex if the key already exists, then it, it'll um, update the value associated with that key. And then I've got, of course, get value by key, which is again using this this view wrapper. And then you can see that I'm doing the get and then doing my obvious error checks and things like that. This, I think this value handling can be improved. I'm not 100% sure on how I want to improve it. So I think I'm actually gonna leave that one. I'm really hoping to do a video in the future where I'm gonna do a collaboration with a more experienced Go developer, probably someone from Charm. So I'll probably get somebody on who's a little bit more experienced and get them to like rate my code and like ask them all my questions. So if you are looking to learn Go programming, that'll be a really fun video that you can look forward to as well. And then finally, I implemented the delete value. So based on the given key, you can delete both the key and the value from the key value store. And so again, we're using the update and just deleting that from, from the database. And if there's a problem, return it, <laughs> bubble it up. And then we would handle that in our main.go, which is normally what you want to do in Golang. By the way, uh, you shouldn't be handling errors in each like individual function. It's basically like if there's an error, bubble it up, bubble it up, bubble it up. And ideally you're wrapping it. So you can use um, fmt.errorf and put your own like custom error of like, by the way, this didn't work, um, like unable to delete and then like attach the uh, attach the error message with percent %v and then bubble that up. So then when it comes time for like, if something fails, when you're calling it from your main, it, it bubbles up all of the errors. So you have all the context that you need to figure out exactly where it failed and what you need to do to fix that. So that is what's going on there. And then I also have my repository test. So as I was implementing all of this functionality, I was building out tests for it as well. So with my tests, what I have is, I also need to clean this up. Okay, listen, listen, she's a little messy. She's a little bit messy. But basically what I'm doing is I've got tests for each of the like core pieces of functionality that I just implemented. And what I was doing, um, yeah, I wasn't really doing test driven development because I wasn't writing the test first, but I was writing it right after. I was like, okay, I think this will work. Let me write a test to confirm whether it works or not. So not really traditional test driven, but we are writing tests. So you can see what that looks like here. By the way, the repo is going to be linked in the description so that you can check out the code yourself and see uh, if you have any questions, feel free to like ask it in the comments. Either I'll do my best to answer it or, or if I can't answer it, I will note it down for when I have the more experienced Go developer that comes on and kind of can answer all those questions for you. 
So basically for the test get all and like kind of my strategy is I have some setup and then I also need to close the databases after I'm using them. So the way that I'm running tests, um, cause this is mostly just integration tests with Badger, but it is for peace of mind and just making sure that I've like implemented everything in the way that it should be done. So it's more peace of mind for me that I wanted to, to do that. But basically what we're doing is we have this setup. So for each test, we're doing table driven tests. That's what this um, kind of format is called. It's funny though that I'm doing it when for this test get all I actually only have one test case but regardless I formatted it like a table driven test basically what this does is I'm creating an array of structs and this struct I'm defining like up here so I'm basically saying that there's a field called want that's going to be an array of commands and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set those values and add them to a temporary like in memory database that I'm creating with Badger. Badger has that functionality. SQLite also has that. So in my um, PJs project, I also used an in memory database for testing my uh, SQLite um, connection. So basically I'm going over for each of the tests, I'm doing a setup and I'm also closing out the database. So it should be that every single time I'm spinning up the database, it is like a clean setup for each test. And that's pretty much what I'm doing. I'm using an in-memory database. I'm gonna close it after and I am gonna initialize a new commands repository that's using that database. And the commands repository, again, is the data structure that is implementing the repository interface, which is defining how we're interacting with our database. That's what's going on there. And then this chunk here is the actual setup portion where I'm, I'm adding all the values to the database. And then I'm testing, okay, uh, so what I got is uh, the value that I get back when I call get all on my um, commands repository. And then I, of course, check for errors because we're Go developers, so we gotta check if error does not equal nil. It's either gonna give me some problem of like, hey, we, we didn't get any commands, so that I would need to fail because I'm not expecting an error. And then I'm also testing um, basically that my got is equal to what I wanted it to equal. Doing a reflect.deep equal to do that. And then something similar for the test get value. Uh, this one's a little bit better because I've got actually like multiple tests in the test table, which is fun. So I'm doing the similar thing where I am doing a setup of an in-memory database for each test and closing it out for each test. What I should be doing though, what like now that I'm looking at it and explaining it to you, is I should actually be dropping all the tables and everything like that each time. So I don't think I'm doing that. Like I'm, I definitely didn't write the code to do that. That is something that I'll have to refactor in this test and that would be a little bit of a safer cleanup instead of just closing the database <laughs> that's what's going on so far and then again we're doing that setup step uh, which could also probably be in its own function for setup and so i highly recommend doing tests so like even if you're just learning they're great practice for like if you're doing leak code problems or you're doing something like this where like now maybe you'll feel more comfortable writing tests for like uh, like integration test with your database or something like that because now you know that you can do in memory databases i didn't know how to do that before and it was super confusing for me for a long time and if you're looking to land a junior role or something like that it actually will stand out if your projects that you're building have tests that's a really really good sign so I highly recommend like getting comfortable with testing. It's really easy to practice as well. Cause basically if you're going to be writing some like manual tests in your like main function or something like that, just to make sure that the new functionality is working, like you're, you might as well just write some actual tests, you know? That's my, that's my take. And then there's this, the, the init in memory DB, I actually just created a helper function for that just so that I wouldn't have to repeat this code. I can just have it a little bit more simplified. And I think that's pretty much all I have to show for you. Um, but if you're looking to find out more about how I'm actually implementing everything, again, the code is linked in the description and let me know what you thought about this format for the video. I'm trying to do my best to do more programming stuff and figuring out how to like do that in a concise way. I've been live streaming the entire building experience. So if you want to tune in, uh, you can do that on my Twitch channel, which I will also link in the description. So thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share with your friends if they would find this valuable or fun in any way. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.